it seems to me that Russia has, in some sense, co-opted the resistance. Uh, and it's only in the last year or so that we've seen people, as you said, kind of sidestep that, that resistance. But Russia seems to be ratcheting up its punishment and, and its repression in that way. Um, one of the things you talked about uh, in a recent Slate article, I believe, was a Slate? Yeah, a recent Slate article was uh, how the international LGBTQ rights movement failed gays in Sochi. Talk to me about how that's the case, because that's sort of stunning to me, because some people would argue, many, most people in fact would argue that quite the opposite has been the case, that this has been an international human rights campaign where the, where the LGBT community and allies have sort of closed ranks around uh, uh, gay and lesbian uh, people in, in Russia. That's true too. And it's, huh. there has been an incredible outpouring of support, especially in this country. Uh, for you know, a number of reasons, one of which has to do that Russia passed its uh, horrible anti-gay laws in June, just as the Windsor decision came down from the Supreme Court. So it was just the, the dissonance uh, between winning a major battle in this country and things turning backwards uh, in a radical way in Russia. That was, that was really striking, and it mobilized a lot of people. Uh, and I think that the coverage in the media and the public campaign for the six months after that, uh, leading up to Sochi, was incredibly useful in focusing attention on Russia, on sort of distilling the issues. What was not useful was actually what happened during the Olympic Games in Sochi. So that some people went to the Olympic Games, uh, the idea was speak out, don't walk out. So there was the argument whether to boycott or not. Um, and the non-boycotting side won. And then nothing did you, did happened. You, did you take that position? I took the boycott position. Okay. I, um, but then uh, you know, nothing happened in Sochi because it is actually very difficult to speak out in a totalitarian or authoritarian, tending toward totalitarianism society, which is something that uh, people learned uh, through, through hard experience. Uh, there's no way to get on Russian television. There's no way to send a message. And of course, the International Olympic Committee cooperated in quashing any kind of dissent in Sochi. Meanwhile... Really? Oh, yes, yes. Say, say more about that. But I, I, I don't think that's a taken-for-granted understanding in the world. I think most people see uh, the IOC as actually resisting and forcing Russia to act right. Uh, I think the common perception is that Russia made a decision to, uh, to dress up the country for a bit and uh, stop engaging in human rights abuses, at least during the times of the Olympics. And what, what, what well, that, that, that must be why 60 people were arrested on the day the Olympics opened. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and eight people were, uh, were found guilty of violating uh, a number of laws for peaceful protest uh, the day that the Olympics were closing. They left the sentencing for, tomorrow, for yesterday. Ah. Right? They didn't want to actually hand out the prison sentences while the games were going on. But it was a pretty, uh, pretty thin dress up if, if there was any at all. But actually, um, no, I mean, the IOC warned athletes repeatedly that any kind of political s statements were inappropriate, that protest would be punishable by, say, their, uh, having their medals taken away. Wow. But in fact, uh, when you were at the Olympics uh, held in an authoritarian country, what you, if you want to address Russian TV cameras, where are you going to do it, But if not on the medal stand? Right. Nothing else is going to get on TV. Yeah. That in the opening ceremony. Nothing happened during the opening or closing ceremony either. There was no protest. Meanwhile, Russian LGBT activists went out into the streets to protest and were arrested. Meanwhile, uh, a woman who started a social network, uh, a support group for LGBT teens, was actually prosecuted for homosexual propaganda during the games, faced trial during the games. And the LGBT movement in this country was completely asleep at the wheel because they were watching the games. What would have been an appropriate or at least effective response short of boycotting? Once the decision to, to not boycott was made, and I agree with you, I think boycott was the only thing that was principled and, and, and powerful. Um, but once that decision has been made, what could have been done by the international community? I think there should have been a, a much smarter media strategy uh, in Sochi. I mean, this is easy to say in hindsight. Yeah. But I think that the, the people who did go to Sochi, there weren't a lot of them. Probably sh there should have been more if they were going. And probably they would have, should have focused on influencing the coverage of Sochi that was coming out of, of Sochi. You know, right. They should have been the ones holding a press conference in Sochi for the international media when the activists in Moscow and St. Petersburg got arrested. They should have been spreading word of the prosecution of, under the homosexual propaganda law to the 7,000 reporters, 7,000 reporters wow. who were in Sochi.